<clears throat> check, check, check. Hey, oh, everybody. And welcome to Scotch and Smoke Rings episode uh, 638. And welcome to part two of In Sound Mind, a very special, scary game that we started last week and that absolutely um, captured my interest and I fell in love with. I can't wait to tackle the uh, part two of that story today. But uh, for now, the way Scotch and Smoke Rings works, the way it has always worked, uh, is that we start the show with about an hour-long Q&A. You've got questions, and hey, I am here to provide whatever answers I can. And I do so by imbibing a little bit of scotch. And smoking a lot of cigars. Now, a uh, bit of housekeeping heads up. I am expecting some important texts tonight. So there might be moments where I'm a little bit distracted and I'm on my phone. Uh, I'll try to keep the disruptions to a minimum. Then for tomorrow, as I announced on Wednesday, I have to cancel my Friday morning live stream. Um... My schedule, sadly, did not permit, but I'm here now, and I will be back uh, during the weekend for a lore video. But in the meantime, it's wonderful uh, to see everybody on Facebook today. Donnie, Luke, Joey, Roman, Toby, Corey, Jesse, Daniel, Matthew, Ryan with the first stars of the day. Hello to the friendly neighborhood Oxhorn. Are the suspenders set to maximum stun today? They, they're set to minimum stun. They're kind of hiding. I've got the wrong kind of suspenders on today. Keeland McLeod and Randy are on Facebook. So good to see you all. <clears throat> and it's wonderful to see all of the uh, YouTube members and Patreon subscribers in the chat today. Rachel with a gold derby. Looking good on you, Rachel. Jocelyn, Ryan, Alt, Grendel, Lane, Barry, Brandon, Beltfed, uh, Sarah, Craig Euler, Sean Fernando with a gold derby, Alt, Grendel, uh, 200 Angel with a Gold Derby, Trevor Robb, John DeGian Berardino, Automatic Beats, Antonio Edward C., Michael Cosmos with a Gold Derby, Barry LeCount, Quinn Tyus with a Gold Derby, Edward J., Kerry Sigmund, Alt Grendel, Tom, uh, Thomas McCormick, Chininator with a Gold Derby, Wayne Azing, Rebel She Wolf, Edward C., It's it, and then Duke Ducatello with the first Super Chat. Of the day says, came by to say hi. Keep rocking those cigars. Will do, Ducatello. So glad you came by to say hi. And thank you all for coming to Scotch and Smoke Rings. Daniel in uh, the uh, Facebook chat with a donation of stars says, I think we need to get Ox a Mr. Handy unit so he doesn't have to be distracted on stream. Yeah, if only I had a robot. To answer my texts, take care of all of my appointments and my scheduling, to just handle the day-to-day -day things, that would be wonderful. But sadly, that technology has yet to meet us. Makiel Cosmos says, hey, I am gold. Hey, congratulations, Makiel, on getting your gold derby. Love to see it. Then Toxic Sean says, hey, Oxy. I'm behind a few streams. Work as usual. Hope you're doing well. Keep the content coming, good man. Thank you, Toxic Sean. Lots more content to come. And Phoenix Prime says, uh, You've heard of Scotch and Smoke Rings. Now get ready for whiskey and weed clouds. I mean, it's good, but does it have the same ring? I mean, that was a double, because Smoke Rings doesn't... Hey, I got a, I got a prop to show off. I forgot to get it ready for the show. Let me go get it real quick. Look at that. Hey, look at that. How's that? 
My mounted death claw head finally arrived. This isn't the prop I've been waiting years, literally years for. Uh, that one has yet to come. And it was delayed again, by the way. I went to the website. They had delayed it till fall of 2021. Yeah, now they're delaying it till fall of 2022. I mean, I'm never going to get this thing, by the way. But this one finally came. From Bethesda. Uh, looks amazing. It's a death claw wall mount. Gotta say it's a little smaller than I was expecting. <laughs> This is another issue of me not reading the dimensions of things online before I buy them. Like, I'm thinking a mounted Deathclaw head. I'm like, great, you know, the Deathclaw in the game are pretty huge, but what's this? That's a mounted baby Deathclaw head, right? I mean, the detail is great, and it looks stunning. It's, it, it's wonderful. I love everything about it, except the size. It's so small. <laughs> it's a teeny tiny head. It's a tiny Deathclaw head. Why? Would they make it so small? It's just tiny. I don't get it. Well, all right, so it's a baby Deathclaw head. Uh, I, I will proudly be broadcasting to the world that I am a murderer of baby Deathclaws, not big, angry Deathclaws from, like, Quarry Junction. No, baby Deathclaws, because that's how I roll. And then I mount their heads on my wall, those doggone baby lizards. They deserve it. But no, look, it's, isn't that the coolest thing in the world? It's just, it's just great. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll put some pictures online. Uh, maybe later this week with some close-ups of the detail. Uh, but it's really cool. Uh, Matthew Bryan says uh, only if the handy has the British voice and insults under its breath. That would be great. I mean, I would only employ a Mr. Handy if it was a British Mr. Handy, because uh, otherwise, what's the point? Uh, Cannabis Sewer says, finally made it to Silver Ox. Thanks for the many years of good shows. Thank you, Cannabis Sewer, for being a supporter for so long. Congratulations on the Silver Ox. No Name says, did you hear about the shepherd who drove his sheep through town? He was given a ticket for making a U-turn. For making a U-turn. Shepherd who drove his sheep through town, making a U-turn. Hmm. You just had to ram that one through, didn't you? Scotch! Uh, Alt Grendel says, How many Apple engineers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They don't make that socket anymore. You have to buy a new house. Right, exactly. That, no, that's a good one. Social commentary, well, also corporate commentary, and a funny joke. I like it. By the way, for those of you who collect Fallout props, I just discovered that Gaming Heads is selling three of the snow globes from Fallout New Vegas. If you've been a longtime viewer, you'll know that that's like one of the major Fallout props that I've been waiting for. I've given up on Bethesda actually releasing uh, 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 Nuka-Cola bottles at the right size. They never will. The only ones they're going to sell are just completely wrong. The wrong size, the wrong shape, and they light up weirdly. No, they're, um, they'll never get that right. So I have to leave it to fans to create the, the bottles. And thankfully, I have all of the bottles uh, from fans. But uh, the snow globes, I wanted snow globes. I even tried to make my own snow globes, finding snow globe creation kits, and I just couldn't do anything that, you know, matched the way they looked in the game. But gaming... Heads is making three of the Fallout New Vegas snow globes. Three are available right now, and I went and purchased them today. Apparently, they've been available since, like, fall of last year, and I'm just now hearing about it. So, if you want the snow globes, now's a good time to get them before they run out. Cannabis Sewer says, here is some money for the Scotch and Cigar Fund. Hope you're having yourself a good day today. Thank you, Cannabis Sewer. I uh, will be smoking cigars and drinking scotch for as long as I can... Imagine. So thank you for that. Wormy says, how do you light a cigar if you don't have any matches? Just cut a bit off the end. It becomes a little lighter. Yeah, yeah. I realized I've been in several of your streams. Every time you say something is wormy. Am I getting it wrong? Wormy. W-R-Y-M-Y. Rhyme my? Have I been pronouncing it wrong this whole time? It is wormy, right? Or is it rhymey? 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 I thought I, th I thought it was wormy. <laughs> well, maybe it, I'll just call you rhymey from now on. 
Hey, Rye Mai. Good to see you, Rye Mai. Ranker says, it's the Deathclaw from the Big Mountain, obviously. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, you're right. The one that lived in the doghouse in Big Mountain. What was his name? Oh, I'm, I'm totally going to put a nameplate on here. Was it Brute? Or I think it was Brute. You're right. There was that tiny little death claw in Big Mountain. That's what it is. I'm going to have to. That's my that's my headcanon now. No Name says, my mother was so surprised when I told her I was born again. She said she didn't feel a thing. Oh, man. Got to love the faith jokes in the chat. To get, that's great. Anyone hear that one at church camp? I did. Adris says, hey, Ox, I'm so glad you're enjoying this game. I was excited to see you play it after uh, recommending it to you. It's one of my favorite recent games. Yeah, it, it was a no-brainer for me. Highly reviewed. Uh, excellent reviews on Steam from users and critics alike. Uh, wonderful trailers and screenshots. It's beautiful to play and immediately interesting as soon as you turn it on. So I'm excited to explore more of In Sound Mind. Jocelyn Ryan says, to whomever stole my antidepressant, I hope you're happy. Cheers, Ox. She says, cheers to you, Jocelyn Ryan. Thank you so much. Ryder Wheeler says, baby Deathclaw are still dangerous. Would make for interesting companions in future Fallout games. Possibly Goris, like from Fallout 2. Yes, yes. Well, we know Goris couldn't have been the same size as a regular Deathclaw because he was able to pass for human by putting a robe on. Uh, and if he was too tall, that wouldn't have worked. So he had to have been a human-sized Deathclaw in terms of height, at least. So yeah, there's always that. Vince M. says, good evening, Ox. Dad joke for the night. What do you call a magician who lost his magic? Ian. Because if you take magic from the word magician, you're left with Ian. Magic, Ian, magician. Thank you for that one, Vince. I have to explain it for those who are listening because, you know, sometimes some dad jokes only work if you can see it written out. Maybe that wasn't one of them. I don't know. Norby9K says, thank you so much for keeping me occupied at work the last few years. Love your content. Thank you so much, Norby. I have no plans of going anywhere. Uh, Robin on Facebook says, lame. Three weeks star streak. Hugs to you. Hey, three weeks, three, three weeks is nothing to sneeze at. Thank you for that one, Robin, for continuing to contribute to the stars on Facebook. Al uh, Elena on Facebook says, Congrats on beating Medusa. Odyssey and Valhalla are much longer and bloated compared to older Assassin's Creed's. 30 to 40 hours? You sure picked a doozy as your introduction. Yeah, I'm feeling it. It's a bit of a bloated game. Uh, lots of fetch quests and, uh, you know, go kill and assassinate this guy quests. For side content in the game. Uh, but it's also really interesting and the gameplay is a whole lot of fun. So I've really been enjoying Odyssey. And I look forward to playing Valhalla. No Name says, Statistician. A person who draws a mathematically precise line from an unwarranted assumption to a foregone conclusion. Right. Uh... Right, well, uh, that's a, a deep criticism of uh, statistics as a profession there, I suppose. Thank you for that one, No Name. Jared is in the chat and says, so sorry for being late again. Hope all is going well. Thank you, Jared. I'm glad you made it. Don't worry about being late. None of your bees wax, says Ox. Did you hear about the lamb that had to call the police? Someone told me he had been fleeced. Have a great show, sir, he continues. Thank you, that one. None of your bees wax for that stinger. 
Rhyme Mai says, Wormy is right. It's an offshoot of Rhyme Dragon. Oh, so I don't have to call you Rhyme Mai anymore? It's Wormy? Okay. Thank you, Wormy. <laughs> Norby9K says, P.S. Hi from Redmond, Washington. Thank you, Norby. Normie, hi from Redmond. You're, you're in my neck of the woods. I'm in Washington as well. Uh, so we are neighbors there, Norby9K. Hope you're enjoying all of this rain. It is pouring out there right now. Rachel says, did you hear about Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard? Any thoughts? Yeah, I did. I mean, just um, the most money ever spent on a gaming company ever in the history of whatever. Just wow. Wow. I mean, just huge amounts of money we're talking about for a gaming company. I got to say, you know, I'm, I'm just a conflicted human being about Activision Blizzard. I've been a longtime fan for as long as I can remember. Loved Warcraft, loved Diablo, loved World of Warcraft, loved Starcraft. I've occasionally played Overwatch. And yet all of the recent stuff about the company and the sexual allegations against some of the people from years ago and just the whole Hong Kong thing has soured me towards the company. I just... I don't know. I like Microsoft. I'm glad Microsoft has bought them. I suppose that an injection of new cash into the company is going to allow them to make bigger and better games. At least that's the logic, right? And, um, you know, now they're owned by the same company as the one that owns Bethesda and Obsidian, right? And in exile. So, like, all of the games games that I love on the PC are now being owned by Microsoft. It's kind of kind of surreal. I just hope it all works out for the best. I'm going to choose to be hopeful here. Phil says, what did Tennessee? The same thing as Arkansas. <laughs> Seesaw. I love it. Uh, no Name says, what do you call a chicken who crosses the road, rolls in the mud, and then crosses back again? A dirty double crosser. Nice. Nice. I like it. Silent Shadow USMC says, what do you call a dead polar bear? Anything you want, it's dead. Lol. I mean, if I was going to verbally assault a bear, I, I would want to make sure it's dead first. So there's logic behind that joke, and I can appreciate that. Thank you, Silent Shadow USMC. Ranker says, the death clause name was Stripe, like from Gremlins. Oh, it was a Gremlins reference. Okay, thank you, Ranker. Uh, Matthew Ryans also says that uh, Tiny Death Claw's name was Stripe, reference to the Gremlins. All right, so multiple people in the chat got it before I did. Thank you for that one, Matthew. He continues, has anyone seen that creepy baby doll recently? Haven't seen him since, like, last year. Like I told you last year, he's gone. I, I tossed him out. The, the little baby is gone. You'll, you'll never see him again. Like, you haven't seen him for months, ever since I got that shipment from... Uh, the Chernobylite guys. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't fret. Deuteronomus uh, says, are you going to look up Kratos' backstory before you play again? Watching those intro scenes, they have more meaning if you know a little of his beginnings. I don't know, Deuteronomus. I'm sure that those who have played the original games and know all of the backstory will derive just as much meaning from watching me play through it, whether or not I personally read the backstories. Plus, it gives people an opportunity to explain to me the backstories if I haven't looked it up first. Uh, Silent Shadow USMC says, by the way, it's Douglas Delagarde. Oh, you changed your name, Douglas. Okay, cool. Thank you, Silent Shadow, uh, for letting me know about your name change. Rockland F says, if you continue to grow your hair, you could cosplay Geralt of Rivia with the correct hairstyle and atone for your past sins. Forgiveness is possible. I mean, this is in my future. I I'm, I have to grow my hair out, and it's probably going to get that long. I don't know if it'll ever turn white. See, that's the big thing. Like, I, I, I've got a little bit of gray, but it's not super, super gray. But you think I could role play as, uh, or cosplay as Geralt? 
Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get there eventually. I'm trying to lose all the chunky, the chunky weight here. And once I get ripped and shredded, oh yeah, I'll do some Geralt of Rivia cosplay. Matthew Ryan says, wife was playing Fallout 4 and came across one of her settlements and said, boy, there sure are a lot of Minutemen here. I replied with, yeah, almost an hour. But um, 60 minute man. Almost an hour. Well, that is an hour. 59 and a half minute man. Jared says, late time, the woman chased you all over the place. Or last time the woman chased you all over the place, I guess you could say she gave you a run for your money law. Yeah, he's a, that's a reference to last week where we were chased all over the place by a ghostly visage of a woman. And we had to make the correct change in order to solve the riddle. That's right, Jared. Thank you for noticing that. Phil says, you're awesome, Mox. Sending love and positive vibes. Thank you, Phil. Love and positive vibes back at you as well. Adris says, I challenged death to a pillow fight and lost. I wasn't prepared for the repercussions. Repercussions. Challenged death to pillow fight and lost. I wasn't prepared for the repercussions, the repercussions. I mean, that one's a bit of a stretch. That's I gotta say, I was a creative, definitely creative, clever. The repercussions. God, thank you, Adres. No name says the morning after Dave wanted some hair of the dog that bit him. He's at the hospital getting checked for rabies now. And there you go. Chase, chasing the hair of the dog. And for people who have been drunk and hung over, they'll understand what that is. Uh, Gwendolyn says, wait until the kids become teens. Then your hair will turn white. <laughs> yes, yes. It will most likely turn white once my kids become teenagers. Wouldn't be surprised. Matthew Bryan says, my new job at the nuclear reactor requires me to take anger, ma anger man management classes. They say it's to prevent meltdowns. Well, uh, you know, I'm glad that they're thinking that far ahead. I mean, if only they had done that at Chernobyl, right? Gwendolyn says, you could also probably pull off cosplaying as Rost from Horizon Zero Dawn. You think so? Uh, do I give off Rost vibes? No, I liked Rost from Horizon Zero Dawn. He was a good friend. I don't know. I've never done a lot of cosplaying before. Once I finally get ripped, I don't even know if uh, it's something that I'll want to do. Who knows? Maybe. Though, will there be conventions then? I mean, the coronavirus has decimated all of the conventions that I used to go to, you know, back in the early 2010s, back when I was doing conventions and stuff. I would go to Dragon Con and Comic Con and Emerald City Comic Con and BlizzCon. But I haven't been to one in a long time. Uh, Gontro Dim says, sending my love to you in the community. Father had two strokes recently, likely from the booster. Thanks for a distraction from life. Love um, the Mass Effect streams and looking forward to more God of War. Gontro Dim, that's uh, horrible news to hear. I'm so sorry to hear about your father. I, you know, I hope he has a swift recovery and is able to get right back to where he, he was. I know that often that is uh, difficult to achieve after a stroke, but it, it, I have heard it happen, and I hope that is what happens with your father. So thanks for coming by and letting us know about, uh, about, about that. And keep us updated. Keep us updated. We're, we're all wishing you and he the best. Rachel says, you know what is creepier than a baby doll? The Slocum's Joe Donut. He just sits there smiling and staring into my soul.
Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, Edward J says the world tongue twister champion just got arrested. I hear they're going to give him a really tough sentence. Thanks for all the awesome streams, Ox, says Edward. Wonderful, wonderful, Edward. A tough sentence for the Tongue Twister champion. Ryder Wheeler says, uh, Died and respawned in Fallout 4, only to find a random encounter of Absalom, a weird lone sniper in full combat armor. This playthrough is a nightmare. Yeah, I have met Absalom. In fact, uh, I don't think he's a random encounter, actually. He, he spawns in the ruins of one building... Uh, along a road, and I know that's not very specific, but I could find it in the world if I was walking around. But yeah, Absalom, I think he's a static spawn. He'll spawn once until you kill him, and then he doesn't spawn again. Devontae Knight says, whatever happened uh, to that Ox newscast series? <laughs> uh, look, I never turned it into a series. I made one video, and that's all it ever was, was one video. You know, I'll, if if there are any other weird coincidences of time overlapping in our universe with the Fallout universe, I may do another news segment, but that really hasn't happened yet. But um, I'm sure it will again soon. No Name says, a new study shows that one-third of people don't floss, while the other two-thirds couldn't answer with all of the local anesthetic in their mouths. Another zinger there, another ba -dum -tsh. Matthew Allen Ryan says, could you do another smoke ship for my wife? No special occasion other than her trying to boop me occasionally. Is that what you guys call it? Great. I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can do a, a smoke ship. Here we go. This. Came from uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and uh, two of the lieutenants on board are Matthew Ryan and Jocelyn Ryan. Jocelyn, whom is trying to boop Matthew. I hope you didn't blink, because if you, you did, you missed it. But for the briefest of moments before your very eyes was Cassandra in her trireme, filled with lieutenants, two of, you, of whom were the Ryans, trying to boop each other, as the Ryans constantly do. So it, is, so it appears. Uh, Matthew Allen Ryan says she likes to poke my nose all the time. It's a boop. Oh, that's what you meant by boop. I totally thought that and nothing else. Thank you for that one, Matthew. You got your smoke ship. Enjoy your boops. Vince M says, I think you could pull off dressing up as dance. Maybe if I lost some weight, you think I could pull off a dance? I don't know. Could I pull off a Maxon? I don't know if I have the hipster haircut for that. But maybe I will at the time. Ranker says, follow in my footsteps, Ox, and cosplay as Superstar Cop. It's more dad bod friendly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hardcore to the max, my friend. Hardcore to the max. God love Superstar Henry the Cop. Edward C. says, Ox, if you do the ponytail, I will also. Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know if I could pull off the uh, the ponytail. The mic went weird, says chat. What? Check, check, check.
God, I don't know. I don't know if I could pull off the, uh... All right, sounding okay to me from what I've heard, but, uh, I'll... I'll be watching it, all right? Uh, Jocelyn Ryan says, Ox, I have to say, the My Little Pony shirt on Matthew was a nice touch with that smoke ship. Of, of course, Jocelyn. I mean, if I'm, if I'm going to be painting Matthew Ryan in smoke, I, of course he'll have to wear the My Little Pony shirt. But did you also notice that he was wearing a tail? It was like as a waistband. It's got the tail. I thought you'd enjoy that, that slight detail in there. He had the shirt on and also a, a fluffy tail. I think it might even have been rainbow colored. Not sure how you do color with smoke, but I can pull it off. So there you go. Julian Z says, hi, Ox. So good to see you this evening. Sorry I'm late. Hope I didn't miss much. Looking forward to more In Sound Mind. Thank you, Julian Z. Uh, so am I. Uh, Robin on Facebook says, you are perfect and lovable just the way you are. You are awesome enough to cosplay yourself. Uh, after losing my husband and mother to FEV last year, I decided that a new start would be best for my fam. I wanted to move all the way to Seattle, but I could only get as far north as Oklahoma. We are hoping to close the deal on a house soon with us. Uh, wish us luck and send prayers. Well, Robin... Uh, thank you for being such a long-time viewer. Sorry again uh, for your losses to COVID slash FEV. Sounds like you're in high spirits and you're using the opportunity to do something you've always wanted to do and reinvent yourself. I wish you all the best, and I hope Oklahoma has everything you could ever want. Thanks again for coming by and sticking with the program. Matthew Bryan says, you had the little outfit perfectly. Such an amazing talent. Thank you, Matthew. I know it's... Next time, I'll give you a unicorn, right? Because ponies have... Are there unicorns in the My Little Pony universe? I mean, surely if there's ponies, there's going to be unicorns. What about um, alicorns? Is that what they're called? The unicorns with the wings? There's got Or a pegasus. Are there pegasi in the My Little Pony unicorn? I don't know. Matthew, do you know? Would, would you know this one? The answer to this one? I don't know. Maybe, maybe next time I'll put a unicorn horn on you maybe some pegasus wings uh julian z says hi ox so good to see you this evening sorry i'm late i oh no i i already read that one thank you for that one julian z sarah says pour one out for me studying anatomy right now it may kill me also i've never suggested a game before but man of madan made me think of you cheers yeah man of madan has been on my radar for quite some time and i hope to find time for it well if you're going to be uh, uh studying right now i shall pour one out for you but i can't pour one out onto the ground because that would be a waste so i shall pour one out to my homie sarah in my mouth Kanek says, uh, when talking about smoke ship, the mic cut out for a sec. Oh, I, okay, I see. It was only during that moment. Alt Grendel says, saw a quote that the best way to light a cigar is with a wooden match since it won't affect the flavor like a lighter would. Any thoughts? I mean, that is technically correct. The best kind of correct. Uh, however, it has a fatal flaw. The only kind of artificial flame that negatively impacts the flavor of a cigar is uh, the flame that comes from burning oil, like from a Zippo lighter or a gas station lighter. These, however, burn on a clean butane, and the butane it burns clean so that no fragrance or odor comes off. So you can use a flame from a jet of blue fire like that, to light a cigar and it doesn't change the flavor. Another risk uh, when using something like this is if you hold the flame to the tobacco too long, it can char it, it can scorch it, producing a tar that doesn't taste very good. But with proper technique, you can toast the end of your cigar just enough to get it on fire without scorching it and your cigar is still gonna taste okay. 
Rachel says, I started a playthrough of Fallout 4 on the Xbox rather than the PS4 so I can actually mod my game. What are your top one or two recommendations for mods to help make settlements more homey other than OC Decorator? Well, as I played on the PC, I'm not sure what the um, mod constraints are on the Xbox, but something to remove your uh, settlement object cap is going to be important. Because if you, if you really get into settlement building like I did, uh, you're, you're going to be frustrated that your settlements are capped at the certain amount of things that you can put in them. What else would I add? I'd also add a mod that removes the height restriction. Because oftentimes in settlements, you'll want to build, you know, two or three stories tall, and you'll find that the settlement can only build one story tall. And that's just really annoying. So... Yeah, there are uh, several mods out there now, on the PC I know about that do that for in, for settlements, but I don't know if that's if that's true for the Xbox. DJ Evisceration says, if you could have a single thing be in the next Fallout for certain, what would it be? It could be a specific plot point, the returning of a character or faction, whatever you want. Uh, uh, my request would be no Brotherhood of Steel. I love the Brotherhood of Steel. Don't get me wrong. I think they're an amazing faction. Uh, I've enjoyed all of my interactions with them that I have had, but they don't need to be in every game, Bethesda. They really don't. There's many other factions you could use to have a great game. I mean, yes, they were in Fallout 2, but minimally in Fallout 2 was a great game. Yes, they were in Fallout New Vegas, but minimally in Fallout New Vegas was a great game. They don't have to be a huge story arc in every Bethesda Fallout. Again, I like the Brotherhood of Steel. I'm glad they were in Fallout 3 and they had the role they had in Fallout 3. I'm glad they were in Fallout 4. That made sense for them to move north to Boston and that they had the role that they had in Fallout 4. Fallout 76... Well, it kind of felt like you were shoehorning the uh, Brotherhood in there. Uh, I mean, it works from a lore point. It doesn't really conflict with anything. They're like, they made it work. But it didn't really feel right, right? So uh, my, my request would be no Brotherhood of Steel in the next Fallout. Just no. Just leave it out. Leave them out. Come up with some new factions. That's what I would love. Uh, Jocelyn Ryan says, uh, now you've done it, Ox. Alicorns in that world are princesses. Oh, oh, I'm getting a My Little Pony education here. Hold on. Matthew is going to be preening about being a pretty, pretty princess in smoke. God, I love your guys' relationship. It's so great. <laughs> well, I hope Matthew is the prettiest alicorn princess there ever was in power armor. Matt Siski says, Evening Ox, great to see you tonight. Another pirate joke for you. How much did the pirate have to pay for his hook and peg leg? An arm and a leg. Oh, that's like a Rodney Dangerfield joke, that. Thank you for that one, Matt Siski. He says, cheers. Cheers back at you. Uh, Jared uh, Shover on uh, Facebook says, with a donation of stars, I have a funny joke for you. It's a Mario and Luigi joke. Luigi says, Mario, what the hell? You can't die here. Or, you, or I'm sorry, you can't date her. She's only 14. What? Is Princess Peach canonically 14? Did I just learn something horrible about the Mario universe of all things? What? All right, continuing the joke. Mario says, Suwata, age is just a number. And Luigi says, you know what else is a number? 91. 91 freaking one. Lol, I hope this joke is okay. Jared, look. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I don't get it. How is 91 freaking one the punchline? 911. Oh, is Luigi threatening to punch Mario because Mario is dating a 14-year-old Princess Peach? Is that the premise of the joke that you just told on my show? Thanks for that, Jared. Is she's... No, Princess Peach is a, like, adult, right? 
<laughs> Matthew Ryan says, as a matter of fact, I do know. Yes, Pegasi, unicorns, and alicorns do exist in that universe. Did you know that I had no idea what an alicorn was until this Christmas? Because my daughter wanted one as a Christmas present. And so I had to go, you know, look for... I did my research on alicorns to get the perfect one for her for a Christmas present. So now I know something about alicorns. Jake Ben says, good evening, Ox, and all in chat, your friendly chat doctor is here once again. Thank you, Jake Benz. Good to have the doctor in. Kyle Warfield with a donation of stars says, how many narcissists does it take to screw in a light bulb? One, to hold the bulb still while the world revolves around him. Right, right, right. No, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Kyle. Matthew Bryant says, uh, I will be as long as Jocelyn makes the costume. <laughs> well, good luck, uh, Jocelyn. Looks like you got your work cut out for you. Matt Rowland on YouTube says, Ox, did you see the story trailer for Horizon Forbidden West? It's awesome. I can't wait to play the game. Finally got my PS5 so I can play at launch. I haven't seen anything new on Horizon Forbidden West since the first trailer that I watched quite a while ago. So I'll look that up after the broadcast. Uh, Carrie Sigmund says... Sad Victorium. After my, my commentary on the Brotherhood. Sad Victorium indeed. Tommy Reed says, Hey Ox, how would you feel about a better way to command companions? More like be a necromancer except using synths or something like that. Uh, interesting. Uh, you mean for like a future Fallout game where you have you can spec down a, a, a robot commanding tree or something like that? That'd be fun. I like that. Grievous Reborn says, I got COVID, but I am I also am getting an Xbox Series X. Silver Linings. COVID and an Xbox. Worth it? I mean, not necessarily cause and effect, but I'm glad you're looking at the positives in your life right now. Sorry to hear about your diagnosis, Grievous, but I'm glad you've got the Xbox Series X. Rachel says, sorry, Ox, I kind of meant mods that add decor items. Also, do you remember what mods you use for reskinned scavenger stations and vendor mats? Love ya. Oh, uh, God, I, it's been so long. <sighs> Decorated your shelf, I think, was one. I don't know, but tell you what, I do have a... I've done a number of video reviews on all of the mods I've used, and um, I, I know I included those two mods that you're mentioning in those videos, so you could just try going through my mod review videos until you find it, or you could check out my mod document. In many of my older videos, I linked to a Google Doc that included a list of all of the mods that I used. Sarah in the chat says, Sisterhood of Veal. Terrifying. Instead of the Brotherhood of Steel, the Sisterhood of Veal? You just blew my mind, Sarah. I'm, I'm coming up with the lore of this faction on the spot. Wow. A faction that worships... Veal. Every meal is veal. Or no, maybe it's a... Maybe it's a faction that hates veal and they try to protect like the baby cows or the baby deer. It's baby cows, right? Veal? Yeah. Oh, I like that. The sisterhood of veal. Brotherhood of steel. Or instead of veal, you could do zeal. The sisterhood of zeal. The brotherhood of steel. Sisterhood of Veal. No, I like it. Gontra Dim says, thoughts on the Activision Blizzard buyout by Microsoft? Yeah, I had this uh, question asked earlier in the broadcast, and uh, I gave all my thoughts then. In short, uh, I'm, I'm in a wait-and-see sort of mode. I hope it pays off for everybody. I hope everybody comes out on top because of the, the purchase. Uh, 
Matthew Allen Ryan says, what do you call a cow with a twitch? Beef jerky. For a moment, I thought you were talking about like a streaming cow. Like a cow who streams on Twitch. A cow that's into the movies. <clears throat> oh. No, that's great. A uh, beef jerky. I love it. Jake Ben says, now what am I going to hang in my office, lol? Well, presumably something that says Dr. Jake Benz, right? Jake Ben says, <laughs> oh, I see. He says, oh, I missed Matthew becoming a pretty, pretty alicorn. Now what am I going to hang in my office? I know, right? You can, uh, you can always scrub back the timeline to relive that moment forever. Jared says, it's a joke I heard from a friend. Gotcha. Well, sounds like you've got nice friends. Robin on Facebook says, agree with the Brotherhood not being in the next game, but I need to know what happened with the great game. Yeah, that's another thing that I would love for them to elaborate on. It's like they introduce it at the very end of Point Lookout and then never mention it again. It never comes up in any place else. No other DLC is for Fallout 3. It doesn't come out in Fallout 4 or Fallout 76. There's a lot of, you know, theorizing. Is, is Cabot part of the great game? Uh, is House part of the great game? We don't know, because they just never mention it again. So having them elaborate on the great game would be wonderful. Uh, Matt Siski says, the pettahood of veal. Oh, is it pronounced Peta? Peta? The pettahood of veal? I like it. That's great. Nicholas Cohen says, good evening, Ox. Are you going to play Dying Light 2 on February 4th? It's a new game, and you don't have to play the first Dying Light. It's an open-world zombie apocalyptic game. Uh, I may, I may not. I've got a lot of options right now. I mean, God of War just released on the PC that I'm really curious about playing. So we'll see. Jocelyn Ryan says, uh, Sisterhood of Deal. Just a big group of extreme couponers. Ooh, that's nice. The Sisterhood of Deal. They go from marketplace to marketplace clipping coupons. Matthew Ryan on uh, Facebook says, We can always retcon it and say, I was turned into one in another universe. Uh, there's always that, though. You know, playing fast and loose with the definition of a retcon, but it's okay. We'll leave that one alone for now. Jake Ben says, the wife says, I should hang the picture of me slaving away getting the barbecue stain out of my doctor's coat, lol. What were you doing barbecuing in a doctor's coat, Jake? It's not an apron. No. Well, good luck. I hope you did it work. Did you get the sauce out of your doctor's jacket? Kyle says, I know you once attempted to play the evil within, but I think you should give it another go. The premise will make sense of the confusing nature that turns you off. I'm also 100% sure you'd like the second game. Thanks, Kyle. That's something I may try to do in the future. Tony, on, Tony Groans on Facebook says, uh, Dad joke, what's Forrest Gump's Facebook password? One Forest One, of course. This That's a, a an oldie, but a goodie. Thank you for that one. Robin on Facebook with a donation of stars says, Lol, deal, I'm looking so forward to Dying Light. It's supposed to be 15 years after the first one, but I'm playing on a PlayStation. Well, I haven't played the first one, but uh, it's something I know I should probably look into. Jake Benz says, with a donation of stars on Facebook, I was eating a McRib, and yes, it did work. Shout out to club soda I see you were eating a McRib in your doctor's jacket as all doctors do hey at least at least it's not like a doctor in the Fallout universe where we constantly or at least often find uh, find them smoking against walls in their doctor's jackets Einhander with a donation super chat on YouTube. Thank you very much, Einhander.
Grievous Reborn goes Sisterhood of Steel. A Thieves Guild. Oh, I see. Not steel as in the metal. Steel as in thieving. Right. Okay. I like it. Matthew Ryan says, are we sure that was sauce on Jake Benz's jacket? Well, it's a McRib. Like, it's got barbecue sauce. What else would it be? It's too maroon to be blood. Blood is, well, maybe dried blood, I suppose. Well, you'll have to ask Jake. Jake Ben says it was a dangerous game of hunger. Well, when you're hungry, I suppose it doesn't matter what you're wearing. Rachel says it's a five minute walk from my house to the bar, but the walk home is 45 minutes. The difference is staggering. Ooh, all right. I like that one, Rachel. That was a nice one. Thank you. All right, we've got about nine minutes left. And then we get to the game. Tony Groans on Facebook says, uh, I made a pencil with two erasers. It was pointless. Oh, that's nice, Tony. Thank you for that. And Jake Ben says, I could have come from t doing a surgery or doing stitches. The world will never know. <clears throat> Thank you for that one, Jake. Uh, just love it. We'll, we'll never know. Uh, the thing with the what's it I completely agree with what you just said there and I totally am not distracted by anything else at the moment Matthew Ryan says shout out to from Facebook to the YouTube chat and the PC building simulator people hey I love a good shout out in the chat thank you Matthew Ryan Uh, Tony Groans says, my last name is pronounced Goin, not Groan. Oh, oh, I thought it was a pun because of the dad jokes. But no, that's your last name. And even though it's spelled Groans, it's pronounced uh, Goin. I'm so sorry, Tony. I'll get it right next time. Thank you so much, Tony. Oh, right, Jake, because of the sauce on your jacket. I get it now. The, the surgery or the stitches? Sorry, I was distracted. Uh, Chase uh, Robertson says, uh, is there a story behind Vault 63? Oh, uh, I'm sure it is, but it's not uh, explorable yet. It appears to be cut content. There, there appears to be cut content for the vault, but as it was cut and there's nothing canonical published about it just yet, we don't, we don't really know. So the answer is we don't know. But I'm really curious to explore it. Jake Ben says, maybe I'll come out with some good medical lore just in case my secret sauce is found out, lol. <laughs> let's, let's just, I think it, we should probably resist the urge 
to use the phrase secret sauce on this broadcast due to, due to the history of this of this chat. This chat can sometimes they're not able to control themselves. So maybe we'll just avoid that one. But thank you, Jake. And then Jared says, for as I know, there is no special way to make your settlements better than some of the mods about improving things as far as I know, because I'm an Xbox player. But there are some really good mods now on the Xbox for settlements. No name says, so I hear that the first shipment of ox thongs are on the way. You heard incorrectly, my friend. You heard completely incorrectly. That is not true. That is inaccurate. Just putting that out there. Letting you all know. Right, four more minutes and then we start the game. Uh, Jake Benton says, if they come out with an Oxhorn lab coat, I'll be the first in line. Maybe I should come out with that garment just for you, Jake. You'll be the only doctor wearing an Oxhorn lab coat. <laughs> Matthew Ryan says, Chad, a Fallout 76 story, released a video about Fallout 76 have a Zetan invasion. Any thoughts on it? Uh, I haven't seen the video, so I'm not exactly sure what his argument is, but the Flatwoods monster, I believe, we can all safely assume is a Zetan, and I think that's that qualifies as an invasion. Slamin' Schmitty says, lol, Brotherhood of Meal, just call me Paladin Refrigerator. Man, I like, that just makes them more approachable. They're less scary that way. Brotherhood Refrigerator, toss me a beer. Right? I like that. That's a brotherhood I can get behind. Jake Ben says, careful, Ox, I might turn into Patch Adams, lol. All right, I'll be very, very careful. Trust me. We wouldn't want that. Jocelyn Ryan says, Ox, we all see you with that spoon stirring the chat. <laughs> stirring the chat up. Perhaps that's why the stinking wolves like to attack its retribution. Oh, are you suggesting that I bring it on myself, Jocelyn? It, so am I partly to blame for the wolves and the inclinations of certain members of chat? It's on me? Really? Well, all right, we'll go with that for now. No Name says uh, Brotherhood of Ox Thongs. Thanks for that. We're changing topics now. Jared says, we all know how is the real star of the show is the donut mascot that looks over your shoulder, lol. No, he is the star. He's got charisma. He's just presence. He's got stage presence. There's what, what he's got. All right, couple minutes, then we get to the game. Matthew on Facebook says, Jocelyn has also been complaining about the lack of ox body pillows. You know what? Garrus is out there. Tally is out there. You want, you want a gaming-related body pillow? There are options. You don't need me to come out with a line of Oxhorn body pillows. It's not happening. It's not. Maybe when I get ripped, put my six pack on a pillow. Yeah. Once I get it, sure. But not now. Maybe later. Jake Ben says instead of the Minutemen, it's the Minute Made Men. As lemonade, really? Well, are you? Is that your way of calling them cowards because they're yellow? Is, is that what they're? Is that what you're saying? Interesting. We'll have to unpack that later. Contro Dim says Outer Worlds tentative release Q4 of 2022. Are you ready for more Sisty Pigs? I am. I'm definitely ready for more Sisty Pigs. Can't wait. I'm going to hack and cough the entire time, but yeah, I can't wait. Uh, wait, Douglas Stellagard says the Donut Man is the whole package, lol. 
That he is. Gwendolyn says thong is also another term for flip-flops, the footwear. Use that, and you can get the last laugh on the people that continue to nag. Ooh, you're giving me ideas, Gwen. Thank you for that one. I like it. Come out with some ox thongs, and they're flip-flops. That's great. Isaac says, are you much of a chef? The Fallout book, the cookbook, is good so far. Sadly, I am not much of a chef. Um, not because I can't, but mainly because I haven't tried. So, who knows? Maybe someday I'll sit down and uh, craft a bunch of recipes. Uh, Jocelyn Ryan says, but the hubby prefers to snuggle up with squishy pillows rather than ripped ones. Well, I mean, it could still be squishy. It just has the picture of, of a ripped ox on the pillow. Why are we talking about this again? Come on. Just please, can we just... I know you guys are excited, but can we just change topics, please, for me? Just if, if you love me, could you just not... So we could do something else, please. Jake Benz says they're helping free the Commonwealth one freshly squeezed glass of lemonade at a time. They're the Minute Maid men. I like it. Uh, so do they have any relation to um, Deezer's lemonade? Right? Deezer's already cornered the market of lemonade in, in the Commonwealth. The Minute Men might be stepping on toes there. ECG West with a, a super chat. Thank you so much, ECG West. All right, time to do the game. Let me turn off the lights and I'll be right back. All right, are things suitably spooky? Uh, Matthew Ryan on Facebook says, I just tweeted you the link for the video about the Zetan invasion. Give it a look after the stream. Will do, Matthew. Thank you. Jared, with a donation of stars on Facebook, says, What are you talking about? Is the aliens are coming down from their spaceships? And with all the alien technology that you can use in the in this DLC and its massive invasion that goes on through Appalachia, I autocorrect most of this. So, well, I couldn't tell, Jared. Thank you so much for that. And then Jake Benz says, uh, just like how we have Where's Brew, Ox. Yeah, yeah, like Where's Brew. 
I think so. And Matthew Ryan says, as for calming it down, don't forget about making it even more awkward with the Walmart ox pasties. So glad you brought that up, uh, Matthew. Let's uh, let's get to the game. Nick Barnhouse says, evening ox, dropping in to give my two cents for the week and cigar fund. Ten days away from my gold derby. Hey, that's awesome, Nick Barnhouse. Also got my complete set of T65 this week. Congratulations, my friend. I hope it suits you. Are you ready to continue this craziness? Ryan2Gamer says, This is a joke slash question. Fallout has tackled other cryptids, but why never Bigfoot? Are those some big shoes they have to fill or what? Lol, thank you for that one. Actually, they did mention Bigfoot briefly in the tomes uh, that we got to read at Point Pleasant. So who knows, maybe we'll see Bigfoot in a future episode. Uh, D Douglas Delagarde says, Oxhorn passed, tries would be better law. They would indeed, Douglas. Thank you for that one. Matthew Ryan says, Awkward stolen from YouTube chat. Oxford, Oxford, like Squidward, but Ox, or Awkward, like Oxford, Awkward. to go to Victoria's house. Oh, we had to do this one again. Sometimes change is inevitable and inevitable. You're, you either get with the times or the world changes without you. All right, so all, all I got to do is spin around, right? All right, so we didn't lose anything. Here we are. We already went to the utility room, right? Why do I feel like I didn't save? If you're reading this, it means I was right. In that case, slide. Yeah, we already did this. But now, how do we get up there? Oh, this just brought us to the other side. Oh, I see what it's done. <laughs> Douglas Dillegard says pastries. Oh, Oxhorn pastries would be better, lol. Not past tries, but pastries. I'm just glad you did not say pasties. Thank you for your vote of confidence, though. All right, so there's number two. That was victorious, right?
Now that's Alan's home. Popping boomer. What the heck? What have we stumbled into? I don't remember any of this. And yeah, we're not going to be able to get into these doors. Oh my gosh, it suddenly got very big here. Well, one thing at a time. It has a small coin slot. All right, another vending machine. Ah, here we go. This is what I wanted, a map. All right, we are just outside the maintenance room. Elevator area and apartments, main lobby. leads back to the elevator. All right, so we're doing a big loop. We're exploring what all of this is. So that leaves a couple things left. Blow up those? Nope. Alright, so those are blocked. Increases your health every three pills. All right. It's blocked from the other side.
It's directly under there. You'll unlock the black smoke after the next tape says address. All right, well then I'm not gonna waste more bullets on it. Yes, I'm aware of the lights flickering in this section of the floor. It will be fixed when I can get a hold of our electrician, Gary. Until then, please don't try and light the hall by yourself. No candles, no fires, no flare guns. Be patient, Superintendent. So it's flammable, but I need like a flare or a fire <sighs> Homo Mart coin it's a coin with the Homo Mart logo on it all right Has a small coin slot. Uh, looks like I need. Okay, so I can choose speed, health, stamina, or stealth. Let's do speed. So I could go down. Let's all right. Let's talk a little bit about what we have yet to do. We got to get past there. There's something past there. We got to solve that. This goes back to Victoria's room, I believe. Let's see.
it's locked. That's right. So it must not have saved my progress. I got the purple vinyl. So I could go explore the vinyl, but I'm really curious about Alan's home now, too. That's all stuff we've read. Duramun increases endurance with three pills. So we got a secret there. All right, let's try Alan's home. told me to write so I'm writing even though I don't want to write what I want to do is scream at people a woman by the lighthouse today told her meathead boyfriend I was looking at her funny and he punched me in the gut I wish I could bury both of them in the ground I'm so mad I'm seeing red all right so we need to figure out a way to get past the greasy oil we don't have that yet Wait, did you see that? 
see that? It's that one. It's a coin. like there's an emergency stop that I can punch. Did I get it? I think I got it. Yeah, I got it. Finally. Okay. Oh, that goes back to my apartment. Is there a link between Virginia and Alan? I wouldn't rule it out. I guess I'm about to find out. Be careful, Desmond. First, I want to find out what's on the uh, gramophone. It's my record player.
Best comment that went through. Remember when you're young. What? Who freaking said that, man? Was that the cat? Try looking around the building whenever you get the chance. Who knows? You might find something new. What? All I had to do was play the gramophone, and now I'm gonna... Shame about Virginia. I liked her. Oh, that was the cat. She sang the song. Um, so best comment while that song was playing was from DJ Evisceration, and he says, Did an anime just end? <laughs> it did sound like uh, the song played during the credits sequence of an anime, doesn't it? Um, all right, so the reason I'm not con uh, concerned about, like, a content match violation on YouTube is because that song was clearly made just for this game, and it's unlikely that they would, you know, go through the whole content match ID system for the game because it, made, it makes it hard for streamers to stream their games, so I think I'm going to be okay. But that song is supposed to be from Virginia's perspective to the detective. I trusted you. I showed you my broken skin, you failed me, something like that. Careful out there. Thank you, kitty cat. Did anything change after I listened? Well, look, we don't got time. We got to go through Alan's story now. Here we go again. I'll hold down the fort. Thanks, kitty. What have we here? Facebook says, aren't you a little old to be playing with the elevator? Hey, there was a purpose to my madness. Then he says, it's a really good song. I like it. All right, I'm glad you like the song.
Is this gonna be the Lovecraftian one? Oh dear. you, Mr. Private Detective. What do you think is behind all of this? Bigfoot? Aliens? Big bad government officials? Shed some light on the situation. Why don't you? So I'm going to have to use my flashlight somehow. James uh, Buick with a donation of stars on Facebook. Thank you, James.
Maybe this is the Alan Wake portion of the game. Shed some light on the situation. Okay, so there's a road that leads up. You see what the sign says. Icarus Woods, Patmos Cove. Both the light and the dark will hurt you. Perhaps like him, you should get a job at the lighthouse. Alone and afraid. Well, let's go down here first. The light house. The light. I have to restore it. Wait for it to pass once more. Then we're gonna use the gas mask. Fast deny. That hurts. That does hurt. Or well, I got some fast tonight out of that. So I gotta restore the light. Alan Wake reference. The guy's name is Alan. All right, Milton Wharf, Point Icarus Lighthouse, Patmos Lookout. I mean, his name is Alan, of all things. All right, we're at road checkpoint number one. Sunken crater. 
crash site. why this is glowing red though. How do I get back up there? <sighs> MG says, hey Oxhorn, how do you follow Will Smith in the snow? You follow the Fresh Prince. Also, are you going to play the Halo games? Just curious. Uh, I haven't decided.
Road checkpoint number two. I can't shoot through fences, apparently. All right, we've got, we got to get through the, we have to find a way through that dark, sticky black stuff. First. It's blocked from the other side. Oh, there's a gap in the fence. Of course there's a gap in the fence. deepens in lighthouse fire. On Monday last week, we at v Virgil County Gazette found out that an ominous call had been made to local police. The caller on the other side of the line did not identify himself, but after some investigating, we believe it might have been Milton Haven's Alan Shore, lighthouse operator at the beloved Patmos Bay. Ask any county local and... March 13th, 1997. All right, what was the other paper we got? We couldn't read it because uh, we were in the middle of smoke or something. Okay, so we came up from Patmos Cove. Instead of turning left towards the Patmos Lookout, we went right. We went through Icarus Woods. We are now at the Information Center. We passed by Milton Wharf. We're heading straight towards the lighthouse. We can't go to Milton Wharf because there's a fence blocking it covered in a black stuff that we can't get through. So I think we have to go this way. Suspicious sightings befuddle Milton residents. What or who's to blame for last month's sightings? Visitors from the Andromeda Galaxy, top secret missile experiments. I set out to interview some of Milton's own in order to find out. Elmio Cho, 38, a receptionist at the Pandora Hotel, recalls a loud swooshing sound that passed right overhead. A flash of light as if somebody took a picture of me and then it disappeared. I then decided to interview Milton Haven's sheriff and marmalade aficionado Thomas Kahn to learn how Milton police are handling the situation. When asked about the sightings, he replied, I sure don't know anything about aliens or supernatural beings, but I'll tell you, if they want to come and harass the people of my town, they're going to have to go through me. Well, it's good to know the sheriff's got our backs. This is far from the first sighting around Milton Haven and the surrounding Virgil County. Who are they? What do they want? These and other questions on the next edition of Milton Mysteries.
where's it going? Ooh, he disappeared. As investigation is ongoing, according to Milton Haven Sheriff's Office, the details of the above-mentioned phone call must remain undisclosed. But this reporter and Homa Mart employee of the month has a knack for getting in trouble in order to get the truth. More to follow on the next edition of Milton Mysteries. All right, we skipped a whole part of the road by climbing up there. Can't get across, okay. Blank will tell, uh, they will tell you that Virgil County residents, specifically Milton Haven, are no strangers to spooky events and unexplainable phenomena, from disappearing children to reports of ghost sightings and extraterrestrial visits. So why has this incident caught our attention so? As many of you know, last week's mysterious blackout and maybe not so coincidental fire at Patmos Lighthouse, grounds may very well be linked. Alan Shore's house after the arson. What are we supposed to be looking for? Well, if there was anything there, I didn't see it. Icarus Lighthouse, authorized to be constructed by President Harrison in 1889 and completed in 1891 at the cost of $22,300. When the lighthouse was completed, it stood some 300 feet from the edge of the cliff. The sandstone tower is 28 feet in diameter of an octagonal shape and 80 feet to the lantern. Also, who cares? We're all gonna die sooner or later and these facts mean nothing. Are you even sure that you're really standing here reading this? Maybe this is some sort of horrific fever dream. Here's a random number, 300,000. Alan Shore was burned alive by the government. <laughs> what? All right, yeah, that can't be uh, a real placard. All right, there we are at the lighthouse. I'll save the batteries for later. That's how we get in.
No unauthorized entry. Dangerous chemical and biological agents have been detected in this area. Milton Wharf Icarus Lighthouse, which may lead to serious injury, illness, or death. James, uh, thank you very much for the donation of stars. Jared on Facebook says, I hate to ask, but what is the story about Ekris? I don't know what you mean, my friend. We can't shoot barrels that are protected by dark fog. So we saw a man walking down the pier in the first one. This one spies the road that we just walked up, but we don't see anything. <sighs> Get some on YouTube says, Hey Oxhorn, love watching and just a random question. What's your favorite location from each Fallout game? Uh, from each Fallout game, huh? In Fallout 4, I like the glowing sea. In Fallout New Vegas, I like the divide. In Fallout 3, I really like... Uh, the metro systems. No one in particular, but all of them. In Fallout 76... <gasps> I like that one weird hazmat disposal site that looks like it has all of the pyramids sticking out of it. What was that? Oh God. This maniac probably melted the keys to all these doors along with his damned house. When management hears about it, it's gonna be your ass. Get someone to go in there and fish them out if they still exist. I'm not setting a foot in there. The whole thing seems unstable and smells of burnt human flesh. Signed, Agent... Dolband? Okay, so we gotta find his house. Terrifying. Okay, uh, oh, right. It's a fuse box.
Okay, so this light always works. I need to somehow... So putting it in the far right one appears to do nothing. Putting it in the middle one turns that light on briefly, but then it turns off. Putting it in that one turns the light on permanently. This one appears to do nothing. Right. It's a fuse box. All right, I'm out of battery.
turn that light off, though. Why is it so dark? There we go. If I'm standing in the light when he comes up to me, he can't hurt me. Uh, so I'm missing one fuse. Putting the fuse over there did nothing. Okay, so this turns on a light over here for some reason. Why? I have to help them see. Okay, so the goal was not to get all three lights lit. I didn't have to find a third fuse. It's just this light needed two fuses, apparently, because that's how fuses work. Uh, Sonoff NZ says, put one fuse in the middle and the other on the pole. Gotcha. Thank you, my friend. I have to help them see. Take a look at yourself through the looking glass and see how shrouded in darkness a mind like Alan's could be. The lantern is off. not. Flawed but fix 
possible. Let there be light. Make it bright. Illuminate it. I get that I need to light the lanterns, but with what? With that. tower when it happened, I took the route down the cliffs and to the boathouse, falling as I fumbled around unable to see. Of all the nightmares I'd had to date, this must be the worst. My light went out and there was an accident. Oh God, it's all my fault. That ship is death, it bears death's name. I managed to find one of those flare guns from inside the belly of the beast. I'm not afraid to use it.
monsters I was told that I was making up have now stepped forth out of the shadows. the bottom. Flawed but flick fixable. Crash, crash, crash. Every bit of me is dark. Fly away. It's out of fuel. my light, the darkness will burn. I need to call Desmond. He would understand. Okay, so where's the next fuel? One up there. Jared says, I mean Icarus. I misspell. I hate to ask, but what's the story about Icarus? How is Icarus and what was Icarus all about? It was a Greek myth about a um, about a, an inventor and his son. The inventor made a pair of wings for he and his son made of wax so that they could fly. But when he gave his son the wings, his son was named Icarus. He said, don't fly too high. If you do, you'll get too close to the sun and the wax will melt and you'll fall. But his son didn't listen and Icarus flew too close to the sun. His wings melted and he fell. Delicious. <laughs> 
Agent blank instructions are to take all highly flammable containers of blank from the bay or the blank and move them indoors. No smoking flare guns or explosives near this crap. Keep an eye on that diver smoking around transport. If he gives you blank about it, arrest him. In a world full of darkness, it is reasonable to try and find light. Alan did when he went down to that ship. But did it clear the way, or did it set his world aflame? I dare you to go down there and find out. Find a fire source to clear the blockage by the lighthouse. Okay, that goes to the cliffs. This goes to the courtyard. Where are we? We're going to be overlooking the water soon. Icarus Point. Welcome to Icarus Point, a guided tour of one of the oldest lighthouses in the Pacific Northwest. We start our tour at the Lighthouse Museum, a faithful recreation of the original lighthouse, Keeper Lodging. Our tour continues in the courtyard, which offers a breathtaking view of Patmos Bay. If you're feeling bold, take the route beneath the courtyard to visit the old boathouse. Finally, we end our tour at the top of the lighthouse, where the red light of damnation will devour your eternal soul. We hope you enjoy your time at Icarus Point, and if a certain therapist is reading this, we look forward to seeing you die. It's a fuse box. Kind of worth a try. <sighs> Can we go back out and get the other two fuses? Okay. That opens the gate to the cliffs. So a ruined cargo container out there. Ignoring his father's instructions not to fly too close to the sun and it in turn melting the wax of his wings, 
Icarus fell out of the sky and into the ocean where he found his death at the hands of his hubris. Want to go down there and poke at a dead body? Sounds fun. Come on! Okay, before we go down, let's try going up. Instructions, boat mechanism. Lowering a small boat into the water is a two-man job. Do not attempt to lower the boat on your own. Once a person is safely in the boat, a second person will use the crank to slowly lower the boat down to the water. Always check the boat and rope for breaks and tears before use.
I need more of this. Okay. All right, so we've got the crank over here that we had to open. It pops out if I turn it too tight. Ah, I see. I see. It's a base for a crank wheel. out if I turn it too tight. So now I just need to get out, but... Okay, so there's a gap in the window over here. We could jump out and then go around. If we pushed it in a bit further. It's a base for a crank wheel. Let's see. But if I push it any further... It pops out if I turn it too tight. for a crank wheel. out if I turn it too tight. Now 
that just gets me stuck. out if I turn it too tight. Okay, if I push it all the way in, there we go. I should sit in the boat first. It's a base for a crank wheel. Ha 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 Bon Okay, well at least we don't have to worry about the red light. At least we don't have to worry about the oil man. Trying to figure out exactly where we are.
Central Intelligence Bureau, new orders, blow it up. Blank, in case they haven't already left for storage elsewhere. If the barrels are flammable, stack them up and blank to hell. Try and contain it to areas that will block access to blank. This includes blank. Seal this area shut. No blank witnesses signed blank. So that box is shrouded in dark energy, so I can't shoot it. So I gotta somehow get rid of the dark energy first. And then I came from here. How's that whole sanity thing going? All right, this looks like a secret, so it's not the way forward. Murky waters are not an accurate reflection of this bay. What?
USS Thanatos. down my spine. Stay the heck out of Thanatos. It's not safe. There is a major blank. That stuff is everywhere. It's blank. Highly dangerous. Flammable and will blank as a kite in a matter of minutes, the captain and crew were medevaced to blank. That's how we get up. Well, what was the point of that? Thanatos doesn't want you here.
Jen Mark. Oh, fun. claustrophobic all of this and I've got a key I need a key that I don't have new quest log update question mark question mark question mark okay well how do we get back out of here oh hey dude yo it is you're here too
my flare gun! Yes, we get a flare gun! We only got two flares left. That's where we came out. Right, no way back inside. Except maybe through here. No, that just goes to the other side. Okay. So we gotta go out the way we came. Well, with the flare gun, we can now open up that one big area. Gives us more flares.
All right, well, I wasted a flare on that. But I should have many more. Intelligence Bureau, new orders, blow it up. In case they haven't already left for storage elsewhere, if the barrels are flammable, stack them up and blank to hell. We already read this. What did we just unlock? <sighs> ah, up here. Pills are sometimes hard to swallow. You are not. Quite a lie. We gotta go out this way. No, we can't. Okay, two flares left. I I think, let's see. Is there anything else we haven't already unlocked before we go up that ramp? I think that's it. So let's go up the ramp. Milton Wharf.
Oh, I need to get to the basket. You're never going to figure out this, uh, this out on your own, so I'll do the thinking for you. If you want to get over the fence and out of the wharf, you'll have to get high. Right, because I, I wouldn't have been able to figure that out on my own. I'll say to, okay, so to get out, we got to use the crane over there, but I'm trying to figure out how to get those secrets that were on the other side of that fence. There's more over there. side. We have to aim through this tiny little hole. from the other side. <laughs> Alright, so two sections we gotta get to. over there. Okay.
That's not far enough to jump, is it? Okay, so I got a crane from that. It's blocked from the other side. This way leads to the top of the crane. they can't go through gates. I'm supposed to move all this chemical bullcrap to the roof of the warehouse? What the hell for? It took an hour just to move the first few. What kind of job is this anyway? I thought they wanted the shipment to go to the quarry from Mike. Well, they gave me a lot of this stuff. Death number one, though, right? Right. You've got to be kidding me. Death number two! Yeah, low clearance. I can't do a complete jump. You've got to be kidding me.
What was that? supposed to do over there? I guess I gotta race back. Break the game somehow? Still haven't figured out how to get over here. I can't use the crane to do it. I guess I'm not supposed to climb down. <laughs> Am I not supposed to climb down because the crane falls and I'm supposed to like ride it down or something? What was that? Come on. Oh yeah, because I got to get to the roof. I'm supposed to ride it down. I'm not supposed to be on the ground. So I shouldn't have tried climbing down.
That was it. I wasn't supposed to climb down. I was supposed to wait until it fell down. All right, well, now I'm on the roof. Oh, wait, I should have waited. Okay, well, we made it. I need more of this. That last one doesn't count as a death, because, I mean, come on, that's, that's game mechanics right there. I guess. Okay, so I just had to switch on the lights. And I think we're fully stocked. trying to get in here at me. What the heck? <sighs> it bounced off. So the flares don't get rid of things that are embedded in the darkness. Pretty good. So 
Mike from Rick. Mike, if you need to restart the gantry crane brakes, you're gonna need three fuses. You can get them at the garage and at the back left storage shed. If you still need more, you can steal one from the generator if it's not in use. These cheap bastards need to buy us more equipment, I swear. Garage Shed Generator. Well, there's the generator. It's a fuse box. get him to eat this. Oh, and that's how I get in there. He eats those boxes, too. box.
shed. Central Intelligence Bureau. Following the event, any talk of a blank will not be mentioned or discussed. Any witnesses are to be blank, 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 burned. Direct orders from blank. Wait, wait, there's supposed to be a fuse here in the shed. Oh, it must be around back. But I've been behind the shed already. putting boxes outside my garage vent. I need the ventilator or I'll suffocate on paint and gas fumes. Who's gonna fix your boats and such then, huh? Let that sink in. I can't carry that much ammo. Oh, I gotta get him to eat the boxes outside first. It's a fuse box. Oh, wait, no. Okay, so we've got one from the garage. We didn't get the one from the shed, though. We didn't see one at the shed.
Ox, reread the note. Yeah, the note said the generator, the shed, and the and uh, the garage. We got the one from the garage. Garage and the back left storage shed. Was that the back left storage shed? It looked like a garage. If that wasn't the garage, what is the garage? Back left from what direction? If it's from here, we went over there. the garage? Because we already explored this and we didn't find another fuse. This doesn't look like a garage, it looks like a storage shed. warehouse says uh, Matthew yeah so if that's the warehouse and that's the generator that looks like a storage shed so then that must be the garage right but if that's the storage shed where's the fuse This is the garage, not a shed. And that's where we found one. also implied that you might not find one in either location. Okay. But we need three. Why is it so dark?
fast tonight. Oh, is that the back left storage shed? Change of plans, due to the blank mishandling of the shipment, we are going to have to contain as much Agent Ray blank and focus on damage control. I have a civilian driver that collided with traffic not a minute after leaving this blank. I'm wildly uncomfortable with these dock workers and local hires handling this stuff, but orders are now to store blank barrels in various locations around blank, including blank, 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 park, signed blank. Yes. Gantry crane to escape. Go back up onto the roof. Use the gantry crane to exit Milton Wharf. How do we get back to the gantry crane? Huh? <laughs> 
Alright, I'm really confused. The movable crane says the silent shadow. I don't know. I mean, this is the crane. That's not a crane, but this is now crashed into the roof. Oh, that crane. Oh, not this one. on what what we jumped down there earlier why would I die again <laughs> bull crap man That was, that was miserable, man. Bravo! It only took you an hour to find your way past a chain link fence. That light you've been carrying around seems to be losing its brightness. Perhaps like you, it needs to be put in its place. Are the developers watching me? How did they know it took me an hour? Well, that's the four hour mark. <clears throat> I don't think I have time to finish this. Uh, Draco Spider says, listening to Ox like a podcast while working night. Thank you, Draco Spider. Douglas Delegard says, the movable crane. Thank you, Douglas Delegard. I got there in the end. I'm not sure how much is left of this, uh, this particular tape. But I don't think I have enough time uh, <clears throat> as I have an appointment tomorrow. So. Oh, we're back to this, are we? to chill out.
Okay, so that other path was a wrong turn. I was thinking that uh, we could use the the darkness monster to eat up the plywood that was blocking the fence, but apparently not. And instead, we just got zapped by the lighthouse a lot. So, uh, and thankfully, I, there was an autosave just as I got to this section. And I think we just need to I need to go up to the lighthouse and somehow find a way to swap out the light. But that is something we are going to have to do. Uh, next week, Samox time, Samox channel, as I'm all out of time. Uh, no live stream tomorrow because I have an appointment. So uh, you'll see me again on Saturday for another lore video in my series on Fallout 76 Steel, Dawn, and Rain. I hope you'll enjoy it. Brandon Beltfed says maybe just play on till current cigar runs out. No, I gotta go. I really do. I've got to get my sleep. Have a wonderful night, everybody. I'll see you soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.